Welcome, Gracious Gang. It's Mike from The Gracious Guest Show, thegraciousguest.org, back with you for another installment in our Gospel of Mark series. I'm reading through the Gospel one chapter at a time and just taking a little uh, time to meditate on the message or some message from that particular uh, section through the lens of this great Catholic commentary on sacred scripture. And we'll do that at the end and close with prayer. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, Before we do that, if you haven't subscribed or liked this uh, video, please do those things and get the word out if you could. Share the gospel with somebody today, okay? So let's go ahead and pray. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no longer room for them, not even about the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like this? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus perceiving in his spirit that they questioned like this within themselves, said to them, Why do you question like this in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, take up your pallet and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your pallet, and go home. And he rose, and immediately took up the pallet and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. He went out again beside the sea, and all the crowd gathered about him, and he taught them. And as he passed on, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office and said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he sat at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were sitting with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst in the skins, and the wine is lost. And so are the skins. But new wine is for fresh skins. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look what they are doing, what is not lawful on the Sabbath. And he said to them, Have you never read what David did? When he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God, when Abiathar was high priest and ate the showbread? which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord 
even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to reflect here just in closing on that first part with the paralytic, which is just a beautiful, a beautiful story we see in a couple, a couple Gospels. This is on page 58 in the Catholic Commentary on Sacred Scripture. This particular volume, the Mark uh, volume, is authored by Mary Healy. Uh, and so this is on, again, page 58, dealing with reflection application of that first por portion about the paralytic. If a paralyzed man is an image of someone who cannot help himself, who needs the help of others to carry out some of the basic tasks of life, then all human beings are paralyzed in relation to God. None of us can approach God with self-sufficiency, relying on our own strength alone. All have been incapacitated in one way or another by sin and need the faith of others, whether parents, teachers, friends, or even strangers, to carry us to Jesus, especially in times of spiritual darkness, confusion, or fatigue. The faith of this man's loyal friends was the catalyst for Jesus to work a healing that changed his whole life physically and spiritually. In a similar way, Christians are often called to bring to Jesus those who cannot come by themselves. Indeed, parents do so whenever they baptize an infant. Intercessory prayer, offered in tenacious faith that lets no obstacles block the way, is another powerful way to bring others to Jesus. Well said. All right, let's go ahead and conclude, as always, with our prayer invoking the intercession of Our Lady of Czestochowa. It's great Polish devotion. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Mother of Czestochowa, thou art full of grace, goodness, and mercy. I consecrate to thee all my thoughts, words, and actions, my soul and body. I beseech thy blessings and especially prayers for my salvation. Today I consecrate myself to thee, good Mother, totally with body and soul, amid joy and sufferings, to obtain for myself and others thy blessings on this earth and eternal life in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark chapter 3 is up next. Don't miss it. Until then, God bless you. Take care.